Hi guys, it's Mangi from Rock Paper Copy. In this video, we'll talk about complete Shopify blog SEO. So optimizing your Shopify blog to get more free traffic from Google, to rank higher over your competitors, and to convert blog readers into paying customers. Welcome to Rock Paper Copy, best place for Shopify store owners to learn about SEO, getting traffic and sales. So why blog is so important for SEO? Well, first of all, it adds fresh content to your website on a regular basis, which as we know is something Google really, really loves. Google pays attention to how frequently your website is being optimized. And even if you rank similar to another competitor in the search results, naturally Google will put you above them because you've got content added more recently. Blog also keeps your visitors on the website for longer, clicking from page to page, sharing your content, which as we know, it improves user experience, which is the most important for Google. So blog plays a huge role when it comes to your SEO, when it comes to your sales, your conversion rate, and when it comes to bringing completely free traffic to your website. And in this video, we'll go step by step over the elements you need to add and you need to optimize in your Shopify blog in order to make the most of it to make it work best for your SEO. So when you first start your online store, you need to add a blog. Go to online store, blog posts, and if you scroll down, you will be able to see the area where you can create your first blog post. Click it. And here's the area to fill in with your first blog post content. So we'll go through that one by one in this video. But first, let's add a blog to our navigation. So under online store, go to navigation. And let's say I want to add it to my footer menu. So I'll click it, add menu item. And under link, search for blogs. And this is the default blog. You can change the name later if you want, but I'll link it as it is for now. And then I'll change the name displayed in the menu to blog and add. Now click save. And if I preview the store, you will be able to see the blog linked from the menu. Okay, obviously the store is just unfinished, but if I scroll down, you can see the blog here. Okay, let's go back and create our first blog post. Okay, so these are the elements of the blog post. So this is the title, the content, so obviously the body of the article, the feature to image, so it will be displayed on a blog page that contains the previews of each blog post. Sometimes it's also featured at the top of the article on the blog post page. It really depends depends on the theme you've got. The excerpts are obviously the short summary of the blog post. It will be displayed on the general blog page and obviously the Google snippet. So meta title, meta description and the URL that we will be able to edit and optimize. The author, if you've got a number of staff members, you can change the author here. You can assign which blog this article should be assigned to. So you can have a few different blogs. Let's say you can have a blog related to fashion or to beauty. And if you've got a number of articles, obviously you want to assign the article to the right blog. If you're just having general blog, general article, one blog is perfectly enough. And then obviously the tags. So tags work the same as the tags that you assign to your products. They allow people to find the content quicker using the search function on your website. So let's put a sample text. For that, I'll be using my favorite Cupcake Ipsum. So go to Google, search for Cupcake Ipsum and click on this. Let's say we want just a short one. Give your text some love. Generate. And simply copy that to clipboard. Now go back to your blog post page and paste it. But I do encourage you to paste it within the code and I'll show you why. So the code section, if you click show HTML, you will be able to paste it here. So any formatting from the other website won't be applied to this page. Otherwise, any formatting 
will override your website's default formatting and by formatting I mean the text color, text style, paragraph breaks, text size and so on. So if you want your font to look consistently on every page, I do encourage you to paste any content within the code section and then optimize it as you would any other page. But just to give you an example, I'll paste it the normal way and I'll paste within the code and show you the difference. So if I paste it here, it looks all right, right? But if you see the code, you can see there's plenty of styling applied. So this kind of widget. So this is all the styling, loads of unnecessary coding that can also slow down your website and can make your font look just not consistent with the rest of your website. That's why I don't recommend using this method. I'll remove it. So highlight all, delete, and I'll paste it within the source code. So show HTML and paste it here. You've got a text pasted, but you'll have to add the paragraph breaks and any styling yourself. So as you can see, the code is clear, no extra coding, no extra styling, so that's perfect. Okay, let's first add a title, so let's say just a sample title here without the break at the end. And add the excerpt, so let's say like first two or three sentences, obviously this is just a sample Okay, excerpt again within the coding. Okay, perfect. You can also add the styling of the excerpt if you want. You can add image, link, and so on. Now the search engine preview, as you can see, the URL by default is really long and the meta description is cut off at the end. So you need to update them as well because as you know, Google Snippet is displayed in the search results and you want to make sure that the Google Snippet really stands out. And I do recommend saving the blog post periodically. You don't want to continue making changes without saving because anything can happen. Your computer might die. You might need to do something else and then you will close the window. You will lose the changes. So remember to save the changes to click save now and again when working on a blog post so you don't lose the work done so far. Simply click save and continue working. You can also preview this blog post if you want, so click preview. And this is how it looks like. It is not styled yet, but obviously this is the basic white slate. Let's optimize our Google snippet. So the meta title would be the same as the blog post title by default, unless you change it. And you can see the Shopify indicates that you can put up to 70 characters in a meta title. However, remember that Shopify also displays the name of your store at the end of the meta title, which will be displayed in a search result. So you need to leave the room for that. Depends on on the length of your store name, you need to accommodate space for that. So I would say don't go over 40-50 characters for your meta title on the any content of the website because your store name will be displayed for any page, product, collection, blog post and so on. So we can leave the meta title as it is or put a different title but because this is a random text there is no point changing it but you can change it if you want it. When it comes to the meta description, Shopify indicates you can put up to 300 120 characters, but majority of the search engines, Google included, displays only about 150, 160 characters. So I would say don't go over 150 characters. There will be nothing extra included as with the meta title. So obviously you need to specify the meta description. So I'll just remove the excess character. So let's say we're left with 152 or 151 if I delete the last characters. Okay, so I'm happy with 150 characters test that's perfect and also URL I really prefer shorter URLs as long as they are descriptive as long as they tell Google what the page is about they don't have to contain your keywords but make sure that they are really relevant to the content on the page so let's say cupcake ipsum is uh, definitely describes what's on the page so I'll remove the rest make sure that the create uh, URL redirect is ticked, especially if you're changing URLs for the old content, make sure that visitors will be redirected from the old content to the new content. But with a brand new post, it's not that important, but it's a good practice to always have it ticked. When finished, click save. 
can also remember to save it periodically as I mentioned before. Now let's optimize the body of the blog post, which is the main text, and we'll add hashtags, internal links, images, and make the text more user-friendly. So first of all, let's add more frequent paragraph breaks. Why it's important? When someone sees a block of text, it can be discouraging from reading, as you can see, it's just a one mass of text. Online readers don't tend to read word by word, they tend to scan the text in order to understand what the content contains. So making it easy to scan your text will make your website more user-friendly, which will definitely benefit your SEO because Google pays a lot of attention to how user-friendly the websites are. So let's add paragraph breaks. Let's say I want to add paragraph break every three sentences and also vary the length of the paragraph. So I can put three lines here, then a little bit over one line here. Let's say one sentence paragraph here, then a little bit more. It gives a nice flow, it gives a good variety of the text, it makes it more visually pleasing. Let's add a paragraph here and let's add this last sentence as a separate paragraph. Save. And let's preview this blog post. As you can see, it's much more encouraging for the user to scan it to understand it much, much quicker. But we'll make it even better through adding hashtags. And hashtags are often used to describe what's in the next paragraph in a short two or three word sentence. Hashtags are also more SEO friendly because they carry much more value for Google as to what the content is about. That's why you need to add relevant hashtags to every content on your website, not only blog posts, but also pages and products when relevant. So by default, h1 tag is the most important for Google. It's usually assigned to the page title, but sometimes it makes sense to add another h1 tag at the top of the blog post. So let's do it right here. Let's add h1 tag after the first paragraph. So I'll put a paragraph break and something that will describe the paragraph below. Let's copy those three words, paste it here, and now let's make it into H1. So highlight it, click text formatting, and select heading 1. So this is H1. Save it and preview it. And this H1 tag added, as you can see, it jumps out of the blog post, which makes it very easy for people to scan and understand quickly and much easier what the content is about. If you don't like the size the H1 tag, because H1 is the biggest of the tags, there's a small piece of code you can add to make it smaller without losing the heading one value. Let's do it right here. All you need is this small bit of text to resize the font of H1 tag in order to make it smaller, and I'll show you how it work so let's copy that and put it within the code section of our blog post so copy go back to the blog post click on show html so code section and h1 instead of h1 i want to replace it with this i'll remove any span formatting for now and we don't need that okay save it and preview it. And as you can see, this H1 tag looks much smaller. It still has got full SEO H1 value, but it looks much, much smaller, much more visually pleasing. If you want to make it slightly bigger, all you have to do is replace 20 with something else. Let's say we'll replace it with 30. 30, 40, I think it will be the original. Save it and preview it. And you can see it's slightly bigger. It's not as big as the original one. I think the original one had 40 pixel size and this is much, much better. And we'll add H2 and H3 the same way. Let's go back to the blog post, show the full body and let's add H2 here. Let's say chocolate pastry. Highlight it and the same way add heading and height 3 as well. Let's say I want to put here lemon drops jujubes. Okay, highlight it and height 3. You can add more, you can add H4 as well, H5 and H6. Remember that the bigger the number, the smaller in size the H tag will be, and I'll show you what I mean. 
So I saved it and let's preview the blog post. As you can see, this is our H1 tag, H2, H3. They've got different styles because this is how the theme is set. You can obviously change the font of the tags in the theme settings. And these tags make the text much more user friendly, much easier to scan, much faster to understand what the content is about. Now let's add internal links. And why internal links are important? They help Google scan hidden pages otherwise Google wouldn't be able to access them. They also keep the visitor longer on a website, which is very important for SEO as well. And they also help Google understand better what the page is about, because if you link to other related page, it helps Google classify your content to put in more relevant search results. So let's add internal link. Let's highlight the text we want to link. Let's say those sugar plant dots with macarons. And we have haven't got a lot of content at the moment so I'll just link to the home page but you can link to the product page you can link to another blog post you can link to another page so highlight the text and click this link icon insert link and you have to put the link to the home page paste it and here you can add a link title so this is like SEO friendly tag for your link so make sure to optimize this section as well link title Make sure that it's relevant to the link, but also contains your keyword if you can add them as well. The same opens in the same window and click insert link. Now save and let's preview it. And now this link is highlighted here and if you click it, you'll be directed to the home page. It opens in the same tab, which is perfect. The next step is to add an image and in order to add image you'll have to find royalty free image and I recommend using one of two platforms to do that either Canva or Pixabay and in this tutorial I'll be using Pixabay so go to pixabay.com the link is in the description and search for the relevant picture this website gives you access to royalty free images so you can add them to your website without worrying about the copyright issues okay because our blog post has got this kind of generic cupcake ipsum i'll find related cupcake image cupcake and simply click on the image that you like most i'll scroll down and see what we can use Okay, I really like this one. It's not really cupcake. It's an illustration. It's got a transparent background. It has got very eye-catching colors, so I will download it. Before you download, you'll have to create a Pixabay account. You can link it with Facebook or I believe Google as well. It saves you login in every time. And when ready, simply click free download. Pick the size. Because it's the blog post, I definitely stick to the smaller one because it will have a smaller size so it won't affect loading speed and Okay, now this image is downloaded. What we want to do first, before uploading it to our website, we want to geotag it. And I've got a separate video showing you step by step how to do it and why to do it. So make sure to check it out. And in this tutorial, I'll simply show you how to upload and optimize the image. So let's go to our blog post, click at the top or wherever you want to place an image. Select this insert image icon. Now upload file and upload it from your computer. So select it, double click it and it's been uploaded. So select the image again and now let's start optimizing it. So let's insert image alt text. As you can see, this alt text is used to describe what's in the image, which from the user experience is the right way to optimize images. Don't use alt text just to insert the keywords because it can actually work against you. It will be considered as keyword stuffing. So you can choose a different size as well. You can choose smaller one or bigger one. I don't recommend choosing bigger one over the size that we've downloaded because the image will be stretched out and it will be blurry. So pick either original size or smaller size so I will pick 400 on 400 so it will be size very web friendly page friendly and when ready simply click insert image and by default images inserted into Shopify don't look very nice and I'll show you what I mean click save and preview the blog post 
And as you can see, the image is uploaded at the top. The text isn't really optimized, doesn't really look very nice. There's no border between the image and the text. Because this is a transparent image, we don't see it clearly the border of the image. By the shape of the text, I can see that this image ends right here in this corner and the text touches closely to the image. So we have to optimize it so the text displays on the side with a nice border on the right side of the image and below the image. And I'll show you how to do that. So go back to the blog post. So click the image, make sure that it's highlighted and select this image icon again, edit image. And here I'll select that is wrap text around image image will be displayed on the left so that's good and because it's displayed on the left we'll have to add border to the right and the optimum size is 25 pixels you can add more but I don't recommend adding less and edit image so click save preview it again as you can see text is displayed now on the right there is nice border be between the text and the image and the look is much more professional so you've got h1 tag h2 tag is displayed right below h3 and so on so it looks very professional it looks very inviting so i'm really happy with how the blog post looks so far you can also add a featured image to the blog post and it will be displayed on the blog page when there is a summary of the articles and sometimes in some of the themes the featured image is displayed as the header picture above the photo so you can choose the same image that you uploaded or you can choose a completely different image but for this example Example, I'll choose the same image so I click add image and select from my computer and now make sure to update it with alt text so edit image and insert alt text you can put the same alt text but I recommend varying it slightly so so it also describes image but it a little bit different way so it gives more variety to your SEO value so when finished simply click save and now remember to save the changes again also before publishing the blog post remember to make it visible if you want to publish right away or if you want to publish it in the future for example if you are just scheduling the blog post you can also set when it's going to be published but I want to publish it right away so I'll simply click visible and click save again and let's preview this blog post again looks great so this is author publish date is already displayed so today the title the content, the image, and if I go to the blog page, I will be able to see this image with a short description and the featured image as well. So click on blog, and this is how it is. Blog title, featured image, and the short description, and the link to read more. And this is how you do your Shopify blog SEO. If you loved this video, smash the like button now and subscribe to my YouTube channel for regular SEO and e-commerce tips. Also, hit the bell to be notified every time I upload new video. Now watch these videos next, recommended for you here, to learn more about SEO and running successful online business. Bye-bye!